Hi. I'm uh, Professor Pete Carr at the University of Minnesota. I've been on the faculty here for not quite 40 years, and uh, we're going to have a conversation today about a very important topic. And I'm Evan Anderson, a graduate student at the, the University of Minnesota and also a member of the community of chemistry graduate students, the student group that puts together these videos. Today we're going to discuss a very important topic that is how to choose and think about choosing a thesis advisor. Uh, so Pete, I'll start off and ask you, what do you think are the more, most important aspects of choosing a thesis advisor? Well, Evan, that's, I'm afraid we could go on for quite a while about that subject, but before we get into it, I'd like to tell you about a little book that I gave to many of my grad students and postdocs to read. It's uh, Peter Feebleman's book, A PhD is Not Enough. Um, chapter 3 actually addresses the question you just posed to me about uh, choosing an advisor. I really uh, cannot uh, recommend this book too strongly. It's a wonderful little book. I think that all grad students should read it uh, very shortly after they get into graduate school. To me, uh, the big issues, well, there are a number of big issues in, in choosing a graduate advisor. Um, the first and perhaps the most important one is what are you interested in studying? Um, your, your personal research interests are really essential in this process. And the reason that I say this is that, that uh, if you are not really happy with your field and research topic, uh, you're going to have a lot of difficulty later on when you run into a problem in doing your research or a problem of a personal nature, perhaps even with your research advisor. Um, you need, this, this is actually something that happens much more commonly than you might imagine at the beginning of your, your research experience. Um, in the absence of the motivation of having a problem, a research project that really motivates you, uh, I think you could become pretty stressed out. And uh, you might become possibly disappointed in, in your graduate career. So in, in choosing an advisor and a topic, it seems to me that the most important thing is to find both uh, a topic and advisor who really turns you on. Another big issue, in addition to the, the nature of the, prob the research problem, um, is will your advisor suit your personal needs? Um, by that I mean, um, are you the kind of person who needs a lot of feedback uh, or do you want a lot of independence? Students are very, very greatly in, in, in this aspect, in, in, in my opinion, in working with grad students over the last 40 years or so. Um, a faculty member with a smaller group is probably going to have more time to work with you on a, on a daily basis um, than someone with, with, with a large group. I think one of the ways to handle this problem of finding out who's going to provide you with the kind of advice you want is, is to talk with your potential advisor's research group. Uh, and I think it's it's a good idea uh, to talk with several students in a group, not just one or two. And perhaps with the more senior members of the group who've had a lot of interactions with the advisor versus someone who might just be in their second year in grad school and hasn't had that much to do at that point in time with their advisor. So getting the kind 
an amount of mentorship that you need is, is really an important factor. Um, another big issue, regardless of the group size or your advisor's prominence, is does your advisor's group have a sense of purpose? Um, do the students see the big picture of what their group's research is about? Um, something beyond the merely technical uh, aspects of, of their project. If you were considering working with a senior, more prominent faculty member, uh, can their students provide you with help, guidance when that faculty member is away? Because senior faculty uh, have a lot more, uh, what I would call administrative responsibilities. Um, I can personally attest to uh, the long-term relationships that I formed with a number of my, my lab mates who I've known for upwards of 50 years now. And in terms of my own groups, I can tell you that, that they have formed such relationships and have become very close friends. Um, uh, one very useful way of getting an, a strong and perhaps valid impression of uh, how the group functions is to attend their, their weekly, or whenever they do meet, their weekly group meetings and see how the interactions uh, actually play out um, between the group and, uh, and with the faculty member. The, the, assessing the group dynamic is a, a very important thing to make sure that it fits with your personal needs. So Pete, that was a lot of content that we covered there. I was wondering if you had a few take-home messages. Well, you've stolen a couple of words from the way I like to end my, my, my presentations in class. Um, yeah, I, I want to give you some pragmatic uh, and explicit advice. Um, number one, you should meet with a number of potential advisors, not just one, who you sh really share um, commonality of research interests. Before going to see them, I would strongly advise you to read over a number of their recent papers. Um, third, during your meeting, you should ask to be given some of their recent proposals. That, they may be changing direction a lot, uh, they may have some exciting new ideas. Research proposals are really going to tell you what you might wind up working on in the long run. Um, I advise that you sit in on a, uh, at least a couple of their group meetings, uh, but you should ask permission to do so. Um, finally, uh, I, I think that it's, it's important to meet with several of their group members, especially some of the more senior group members, about how the group functions and the advisor's mentoring style to make sure it fits with your personal needs. I know this sounds like a lot of effort. Your PhD advisor will likely have more influence on your career than anyone else in your life and it will be time well invested that will pay many dividends. That's good. And Pete, you mentioned a book at PhD is not enough, but do you have other resources you would recommend for us? Well, there's, there's lots of stuff on the web that I looked at in preparing to uh, meet with you, Evan. Uh, but one of the best is an NIH-sponsored website and video. Um, and it's called training.nih.gov slash mentoring guidelines. It has a great deal of excellent advice. Uh, although it's aimed primarily at people looking at, at postdoc positions at the NIH, uh, there's a huge overlap in the advice that's given that's really good for graduate students who are interviewing and talking with potential PhD advisors. 
Uh, and in fact, uh, I think it has a lot of advice for people who are looking uh, for permanent jobs. It's the kinds of questions you should be asking about the position. Pete, thank you very much for sharing that with us. It's a pleasure, Jim. I know we're getting better at that. Take home messages. <laughs> Do you have any real take home messages?